synchronizing, saving and sharing data, emails and contacts under our control based on open source software, securely accessing our home network from everywhere in the world based on the most modern virtual private network technology with just a Raspberry Pi. Yes, we want it. Today we will install Nextcloud and WireGuard on our Raspberry Pi and make it work together. You will save a lot of time using the tricks presented in the next few minutes. Gretzi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In this video we will create a typical installation for a maker and his family or friends. Add a duck DNS domain for remote access to our home network. Set up WireGuard VPN on the Raspberry and smartphones to make this access safe. Set up Nextcloud to share data. Attach a large disk to the Pi and add it to Nextcloud to store lots of data. Install Nextcloud clients on smartphones and a Windows PC. And add all the glue between the components. Our final setup will look like that. Our Raspberry Pi will run at least four Docker containers. One for Nextcloud, one for MariaDB and one for WireGuard. The cherry on the cake is Portainer to manage the containers. Not needed for this project, but very useful every time you use Docker. One or two disks are connected to the Pi. The SSD contains all system files and data if you want. The second disk will be configured as a pure data disk. Both have to be connected to the blue USB 3 connectors. The Pi is connected via your home network and your router to the internet. It is accessed from there through a secure WireGuard tunnel. This tunnel needs a hole in your firewall. Because it is encrypted, this is not a security risk. Through this tunnel, your smartphone or PC can access the complete home network. Of course, you can also create tunnels for your whole family or other people you trust. These devices are called peers in WireGuard. Because most of us do not pay for a fixed IP address, our service provider can change it if he wants. This is why we need a service called DuckDNS. Here we can create a fixed domain for our router. How does this work? A small program on our Raspberry calls DuckDNS from time to time. Like that, DuckDNS knows our current IP address. Simple and free of charge. If we call this address, we always get a direct connection to our router. Maybe you think, too complicated for me. Wait till the end of the video and decide then. I promise it is easier than you think. Because the brave people from the IoT Stack project did the heavy lifting. Maybe you watch video number 352 first if you are interested in the possibilities of this project. Let's start with the work. For today's project, we need a Raspberry Pi 4 with at least 2 GB memory, a small SSD and, if you want, an additional USB drive like this one to store large amounts of data. Do not forget to check if the SSD boot is already working on your Pi. First copy Raspberry OS on an SSD and add the SSH file and the wpasupplicant.conf file if needed and update the OS. Then follow the getting started from IoT stack and using menu.sh to install Docker. If you intend to use remote access through WireGuard, it is now time to do these four things. Add a domain in DuckDNS. Add a Chrome tab job on your Pi. Open one port in your firewall for UDP and create a file compose-override.yaml in the IoT stack directory. You can follow the write-up in the IoT stack wiki for DuckDNS and you find a link to the overall compose-override.yaml in the video description. The only thing you are on your own is the port forwarding of port 51820 on your router 
because every router is different. I briefly go through these steps. First, I create a new domain on DuckDNS called connectme.duckdns.org. I copy this token for the next step. Edit this file using Nano. Now I have to enter this line in ChromeTab. This makes sure the Pi calls DuckDNS every 5 minutes. Done. As a proof, you should see your IP address in DuckDNS. The port forwarding in my router is done by logging me in on my router and filling in these fields. Now we have to switch to the IoT stack directory and create a new file called composeOverwrite.yaml. Its content is like that. Important is how many peers you want to create. Each device, like a smartphone or a PC, counts as one peer. It does not hurt if you create too many of them. And here you have to enter your DuckDNS domain from before. Now we are ready to build the stack. For today's video, we select at least Portainer CE, Nextcloud, MariaDB and WireGuard. Feel free to add other containers if you wish. When you are finished with the menu.sh, you find a docker-compose.yaml file in the IoT stack directory. Most other videos show you the cheap solution using SQLite as a database for Nextcloud, which is not recommended by the development team. As usual, we want more and use the recommended MariaDB. This is why we had to add the MariaDB container. We again have to change the compose override YAML file. Change the passwords here and here and make sure they match. You can leave them as is for a test setup. Of course, these steps are not needed if you want to go with a simple version of Nextcloud. If you want to add a second disk drive, you have to execute two additional steps. Add this line inside the composeOverwrite.yaml file. Mount your USB disk and set the right permissions. I leave a link in the description where I show you how I did it. After all this preparation, we can start our containers with this command. It takes a while till all containers are downloaded and installed. As soon as everything is ready, we can go to the IP address of our Raspberry and port 9002. As we can see in Portainer, everything is running smoothly and we can connect to Nextcloud by entering the IP address of our Raspberry and the port 9321. After adding credentials and select MariaDB, we are in like Flynn. We see the dashboard, the files and photos. Cool! First step accomplished. If we install a Nextcloud PC client, all these files are synchronized like with Dropbox. I will not cover all the other functions of Nextcloud in this video. You find other videos for that purpose. We will continue with the hard stuff. We still have a secure remote access on our list. WireGuard is already prepared and running. We only have to install the WireGuard app on our mobile and try to connect to our Raspberry. The tunnels are secured by keys, which have to be exchanged between the WireGuard server and the clients. We could use the old-fashioned method and import a file with all the keys to our smartphone. But we can go the modern way and scan a QR code instead. But where is the QR code? It is in these directories. For each peer, another one. If you have a display connected to your Raspberry, it is simple. Just open the PNG file, point the smartphone in its direction and the tunnel is ready to be used. Very nice. If WireGuard is on, our smartphone is connected to our home network as if we were at home. We even could watch geo-blocked content if we are abroad. A perfect preparation for our deferred holidays after the Covid lockdowns. As a next step, we have to connect to Nextcloud at home via this tunnel. The simplest way is using another QR code. In Settings Security, we can add a new app password. Display it as QR code 
and scan it with the Nextcloud app on the smartphone. Ready is the access from everywhere. Please do not forget to switch WireGuard on if you are not connected to your Wi-Fi. Now we only have one small task left, to enable the usage of our large disk. For that, we go to Apps, Featured Apps and enable external storage support. Now we have a new line in Settings and we can add our disk. Do you remember disk1 from our Docker Compose file? Here it is added as a local disk. Everything is ready to rumble. You might ask, how is the performance? It is for sure not mind-boggling and probably not comparable with an ordinary NAS. But if you use an existing mechanical disk, it is a very cheap solution, particularly if you add a few more containers from the IoT stack collection. It is an excellent solution to share photos or other files with your family or share files among your devices. For example, to synchronize the photos from your smartphone. Unfortunately, I did not find a client for a Raspberry Pi. That would be very helpful for me as I often would like to share files with my IoT devices. Maybe you know one? And I did not find a possibility to share files with people outside my internal network. I still have to use Google Drive for that. Maybe you know more about how to do that. Now you can decide if it is complicated and whether you want to try it. Summarized, we created a safe remote access to our home network by creating a DuckDNS domain and setting up WireGuard on a Raspberry and on our smartphones. We installed Nextcloud and attached a large disk to the Pi for lots of data. We installed Nextcloud clients on smartphones and a Windows PC. And you saw the small print which was needed to get these components working together. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. And if I find the time, even a write-up of all commands in a blog post. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.